Let me start this video by apologizing for the clickbait title. This is not actually a mistake in the folium of Descartes. This is not Descartes' mistake. We might say it's not Descartes' error. This is actually a mistake that I made. It was a coding error, a little coding typo that I made. And it turned out to be really interesting. And it, sort of, it was also a bit thought-provoking and made me um, think about mistakes in code and, uh, and, and mistakes in general. So I, I thought I would make this video and share it with you. Okay, so let me start by explaining the folium of Descartes. Folium of Descartes is this formula here. And we can draw, so you can see it has two variables. It's a, f a function of two variables, x and y. A is a parameter. In fact, usually people just set A to be one. So you can even just ignore that little A character there. So it turns out that all of these solutions to this hom homogeneous equation, so all of the xy pairs that make this equation true can be graphed on a two-dimensional plane like this. And it gives this really beautiful little you know, line that at asymptotes to a straight line here and, and just right at the origin, you get this one loop that goes around here. So it loops around, it crosses the origin twice, and, uh, and then, yeah, then, then it, it keeps going. So this is called the folium of Descartes. Now, if you wanted to uh, implement this in code, which is what I was trying to do a few days ago, I was just a little curious and a little bored, and I wanted to write this out in code. So there's a few ways that you can do this. One way is to translate this formula into a polar representation. So re-express this formula using angles and radians. And you can see the uh, formula is all already worked out for us here on this Wikipedia site. So we have a function that takes uh, two variables. Again, a is a parameter. We're just going to set that to one. So we just ignore it. Theta is an angle in radians. And r is the radius or the distance away from the origin. And this is a polar plane. There's other ways to re-express uh, this as, a, as parametric equations and so on. But I decided to implement this formula here. So you can see it's pretty simple. It's 3 cos theta, uh, sine theta, cos theta divided by sine cubed theta plus cos cubed theta. Okay, and then it turned out that I made a little typo in MATLAB when I was implementing this. So now I'm going to switch to MATLAB. And then a few moments after that, I'll switch to Python. So you can feel free to you know, skip ahead to Python if, if you're more comfortable with that language. So here is the MATLAB code. Now you don't have to worry about retyping all of this code based, uh, based on what you see on the screen. Instead, you can scroll down to the video description. And in the video description, you will find all of this code. So you can just copy and paste and explore and, uh, and play around. So I'm not going to go through every single line of code. I'll just walk you through a couple of key points here. So this is a, a parameter here that I have max phase, so the maximum phase value, which here I'm setting to 6 pi. And here you can see I'm setting up a polar plot. Now here was my critical mistake. This was the typo that I made. If we open up this file, we can see in the help string that the order of the inputs into polar plot should be th and er. In other words, theta and rho, or theta and radius. So this is the angle and then the distance away from the origin. Now, I made a little typo when I first wrote this code, and I swapped these two inputs. So I actually provided the radius as theta and the theta, the angle, as, as rho, as, as the distance from the origin. So there's a little typo that I made, and that turned out to be really interesting. Okay, so here this code is just setting up the figure, and this for loop here is looping over time. I added an animation to this because, uh, well, you, you'll see in a moment. It just looks really cool. Okay, so what's happening inside this for loop? So I'm creating a vector of theta. It goes from zero to whatever is the, uh, the, the, the maximum phase going from zero up to six pi. Okay, so that gives us our theta. And then here you can see uh, the formula for R, and this should look familiar from the, uh, the the formula that you saw in Wikipedia a moment ago. Okay, now here you can see the critical mistake that I made. So this is the theta data, and I call that R, and this is the R data, and I'm calling this th for theta, for the angles. So I have it backwards. But let's see what happens when I run this code. 
we get this really beautiful result, this animation where you see this like kind of crescent moon that's going back and forth. Each time it goes back around, it sort of goes, it has this like constant angle coming out from the origin. And uh, I've also made the colors change. Uh, so there's there's lots of you know neat things you can do. I'm gonna run this again because it just looks really beautiful. So you see how this sort of going back and forth, it's cycling around. It has this like little you know fuzz in the middle, uh, and the colors are changing. Yes, yeah, so I think it's just a really beautiful animation. And this is a mistake. This is wrong. This is an error. It's a plotting error. It's a typo. And what it should really be to create the folium of Descartes should be theta and rho in the correct place. And then you see, we get the actual folium of Descartes. And now the, the folium is, is fixed. It doesn't need to go through as many cycles. So it's just redrawing and changing the color. But here you see the folium. So this was pretty neat. I think I'll, I'll go back and draw this one more time. Now to me, there were two lessons to learn here. There were two thought-provoking things that, I, that, that occurred to me when I made this mistake. First of all, this shows the importance of visualizing your data because if I had just written this code without checking it, without looking at it, I would never have noticed that I made this mistake. You can, you know, you see we didn't get any MATLAB errors. There were no warning messages. So we didn't do anything wrong in terms of, of, of coding that, that made, you know, MATLAB crash or give an error message. So without visualization of the data, uh, it's possible that, you know, I would have just missed this typo. And the second lesson here, I think, is to embrace your mistakes and follow up on them because you never know what's going to lead you to produce something really interesting, something thought provoking, something you hadn't thought of before. This is not only true in this kind of, you know, like weird visualization of math stuff, but also just in general in, in data analysis, in statistics, in simulations. I know it's a little mundane and overused to say this because you hear this phrase all the time, but you really do learn best from your mistakes. So whenever you make a mistake, you should embrace it and follow up on it. So here is the Python code that will produce a little video. All of this code is in the description underneath the video. So you don't actually need to uh, you know, type this all out on your own. You can just scroll down below the video, copy and paste all of this code. So I am using Google Colab here to run all the Python code. Of course, you can use any other uh, Python IDE you like. This should also work in Jupyter and, you know, basically any other IDE. That said, uh, with animations, there's going to be an animation you'll see in a moment. Animations can be a little bit tricky. They can be a little specific to the particular IDE. So it's possible that if you are using something other than Google Colab, you might need to adjust a little bit of the code to get the animation to work. Okay, so here uh, we have some uh, video parameters. The main one here is max phase, which uh, is going to run our little simulation from zero up to, so zero degrees up to six pi. And then uh, here what I'm doing is setting up the figure. You can see it's going to be a polar plot. Now here's the thing about polar plots. So uh, polar plots in matplotlib. The order of the inputs is actually supposed to be theta and then r. Now these are, you know, these are nonsense uh, inputs here just to set up the figure in the first place. But the order of the inputs should be the angle and then the radius. Now, I made the mistake when I was first coding this a few days ago. I made the mistake of swapping the order accidentally. So I actually tried to create the folium of Descartes by inputting first the radius and then theta instead of theta and then the radius. So I just swapped the orders. It was just an innocent mistake. But that turned out to be really interesting. Okay, so here I create the figure. And here I'm creating a, a little function that is cr computing what the animation shows at each frame. So you can see I'm inputting a, a variable called angle and then I create theta as linearly spaced numbers that go from zero up to angle. And this angle turns out to be these phase values that I create up here. So the maximum angle goes from zero up to, in this case, six pi. Okay, and then we compute the radius or rho. Uh, and you can see that, uh, or I hope you recognize that that is the um, Python translation of the formula that, that you saw in the wiki page 
a moment ago. So three times sine of theta times cos of theta divided by sine cubed theta plus cos cubed of theta. Okay, and then this is just updating the plot. And again, this is the this is an error. This is a mistake here. It really should be the plot is really supposed to be theta and then rho. So I, I swap the orders here. Okay, then uh, yeah, this line um, creates the animation. Uh, and here we're going to visualize it. So we can run all of this code. All right, so that takes some tens of seconds for all the uh, for the animation to build up all the frames. And then we get this little uh, video player down here. Now there's just a little dot in the center. But when we click play, you can see what's happening. We get this kind of, you know, interesting swirling pattern. It's going back and forth in and uh, on top of itself. And it's creating these like, yeah, it looks like a, a crescent moon kind of shape with some some like like an asteroid belt or something, some fluff in between and uh, like the angle away from the origin is constant so the crescents are getting larger it's pretty neat this is definitely not the folium of Descartes with this player we can actually run it backwards as well so you can see it zooming in this looks pretty neat it's obviously not the folium of Descartes however we can actually create the folium of Descartes and that is by making these inputs go in the correct order so now I'm inputting theta and then rho again this is the order of inputs that it's supposed to be setting it to go from uh, or to, to be the first input as as rho and the second input as theta is actually a typo. All right, so let's check out the actual folium of Descartes. I uh, don't care about that. So we're going to play and then you see it sort of we get this loop and then it goes uh, once up here and the next time over there. So that's the actual folium of Descartes, quite a bit different from the other uh, image, that crescent moon thing, uh, from just swapping rho and theta. So I thought this was really neat, and uh, it was actually a bit thought-provoking for me, because um, I, I, it made me think of, of two things about making mistakes. First of all, the importance of data visualization when you're coding. You know, notice, you know, there were no Python errors. We didn't sort of do anything illegal, anything that caused any error messages or warning messages. Python was happy enough to do what I told it to do, which was actually mathematically incorrect because the order of the inputs was swapped. And without visualizing the data, I never would have discovered that I had made a little typo here. So that's the first point. The second take home message is that you actually learn a lot from your mistakes. I know that's that's a little trite, it's a little mundane. You've heard that you know your whole life, but it really is true. You really learn best from your mistakes. So you should look out for your mistakes. Of course, you need to correct them. But when you're coding, when you're working with data, when you're running simulations, if you make a mistake, it's something you should embrace and learn from and not be ashamed of.